Welcome to Alpha Male Show here in Rauta. Well, not really. I wouldn't dare call myself Alpha Male. First of all, not too handsome, not enough money. I mean, I don't have a Tesla or Porsche just yet, by the way. Don't have enough muscle here. Way too small. So, sorry, beta male here. But I'm gonna talk to you about Alpha Male stuff, because that's exactly what we have here with Stoner Kings. And uh, their album is called Alpha Male. Not only that, but I also have a Stoner Kings beer called Crow Magnon APA. That is American Pale Ale. We'll review, I'll review these two babies here for your convenience. Let's start with the album in question. In case you don't know Stoner Kings well, the name kind of uh, implies what's going on here. Not exactly maybe the most uh, slow-paced stoner stuff, but it's definitely having this kind of a stoner vibe, and it's definitely very groovy stuff with rock and roll mentality. These guys are no youngsters, these guys are no newbies, they have their experience with some of the previous bands, not too big, but still other bands worth mentioning. And the curious thing is that the main man here, uh, Michael Mayalati, also known as Starbuck, is a wrestler, that is, pro wrestler dude. And he also happens to be his voice actor, graphic, de graphic designer, personal trainer, and very skilled guy with his uh, talk. Curiously enough, he also happens to be a fan of Christian God, which makes this all very, very interesting. You will find my um, interview with uh, Mr. Starbuck in one of those interview videos where we go to the gym, talk about some muscles, talk about being alpha male. Basically, we talk about all the other subjects mentioned except maybe Christianity, as it happens to be, even though we are sort of colleagues, we are sort of friends, we don't share the same view of religion and God. But that's beside the point here, even though worth mentioning is, and I think it's fair to mention that, is because, well, to be honest, uh, that God and Christ topic is a little bit mentioned here with the lyrics, but not in like uh, it's praising that or trying to lecture you about it, but it is a little bit there anyway. Let's take a look at the band's Metal Archive site while I talk to you a little bit about the music before we go with the beer. So here you have the current lineup of the band. As you can see, there are the links to the guys in question. They are not taking them too seriously, as you can see. Face twisting, a little bit wrestling moves, and then some. And this is the official uh, promo picture of the band. And there you have uh, the discography. As you can see, there was a quite a pause between these two albums, and it's been explained like the band not being exactly active uh, over here. Anyway, this is about Alpha Male, not the history of the band, so a uh, quick recap to the track list is right here, and these names give you a little bit of indication what's going on here. I mean, we have songs about Cro-Magnon, that is the prehistoric man, which was defeated more or less by Homo sapiens, being the wise man, wise human, and Cro-Magnon kind of lost that battle, fortunately or not, I don't know. And then we have some criticism about this world, we have about Darwin, which is kind of, kind of a crit interesting critique here, because I am not still sure whether this is kind of a pointing middle finger to Mr. Darwin and his evolution theory, or whether this is about giving the middle finger and criticism about modern man, or maybe both. I only took a glimpse on those lyrics, because I don't have the habit of uh, reviewing lyrics here, so accurately and with time and precisely uh, that's something that goes beyond the borders of uh, review albums first and foremost I do not have the time or luxury and the second these uh, videos would be very very lengthy with that and nobody would <laughs> take a look at them maybe when this is my day done job like never so that's that about the music well this one is very groovy it's very well produced the overall sound is very heavy and the band clearly knows what they're doing. However, I am a little bit and have a little bit of disagreement about how the songs are structured and how the songs are made because while the band 
totally dominates with the groove and the vocals are good. I mean, there's lots of masculinity, the kind of alpha male statement with the vocals and, and all that stuff. There's like a commandment coming uh, from the vocalist mouth and all that. But still, when it comes to the actual uh, songwriting, I feel it's a little bit of hits and misses here and there. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're looking for a kind of a groovy rock and you don't mind a little bit stonery stuff there, well, this is kind of like what it's meant to be. But when we go to talk about the actual hits, like the one that become those classic hits you will hear on the radio decades after they're made, that's not exactly where the band shines. So basically they have a good vocalist, they have good production, they know how to play it like they mean it, and they have the grooviness, they have the flow. It's like four out of five, chuk, 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 done. But the lack of these kind of insta hints, the lack of the parts which just kind of a drill into your ear and you're like on repeat, replaying those songs all over and over again, that's not really happening. And I find that kind of unfortunate because basically, theoretically speaking, this band has all there is to need to become one of those big ass rock bands. Well, for example, I'm no fan, fan of Foo Fighters, but I understand what they're doing with the rock. Or bands like as Mustache, Ghost even. Like, none of those bands are something that appeal to my rock and roll taste, but they have something which translates to making a hit. You know, once you kind of are hear a song, even if you don't like it, you will understand it, will, your brain will translate it like, okay, this will work, this is something that totally appeals to bigger labels and as such bigger audiences and da da da, the legacy is being made. This kind of lacks it. So while this is definitely decent, it's really not that good. Worthy of listening, I, I grant that, but is it something that I will go back in coming months and years? To be honest, no. Now let's get back to the beer business because it's time to open this can. I only got one can for review, so it's not like I can say I had one, another can with some, you know, spicy food or whatever. This will be by blind testing and as such this will be a kind of a based on my initial reaction, not so much a kind of a something that yeah, since I had four of those in different settings, in different temperature and whatever, I don't have the luxury of these cans, nor do I have the luxury of um, time to do it. So it will be like this. This will be sweating a little bit because I took it from the fridge like some 20 minutes prior to making this one. So it's got a little bit warm, but still cold. And um, to be honest, because I have to shut down the curtains, the light is not exactly showing the true colors. That is what, how I'm seeing. Here you will see it a little bit, um, kind of a bleakish yellow, I guess, because for me it shows more orange color. So this color is not fully accurate, but it gives you the indication that this is non-filtered. So that this is not so clear like a typical lager beer, more being kind of a, this a little bit uh, hazy. But it's what's supposed to be, I guess, um, APA, American Pale Ale, which is kind of a relative to uh, more common IPA, India Pale Ale, and just Pale Ales. British beer culture is at its finest, I guess. But so many lager people say that they can't handle IPAs, APAs, Pale Ales, because the bitterness, the hoppiness that is very much included with this one. Now, this Cro-Magnon, before I taste it more, as you can see, this is... 4.5, uh, 5.5, sorry, can't even speak anymore. And uh, it very much features the same graphics, the same graphic design. I could only imagine it could be Mr. Starbuck doing it because, I mean, he's very skilled what he does. If you ever seen one of those modern Gold Moon albums, well, he's the man behind the graphics. And if you know that the other graphics by him, you will know that he has the talent. Anyway, this is how it is, 440 milliliters. And uh, that's, I guess, pretty much all there is to say. Except you can pretty much read that this is done by this United by Design company. And Bone Machine Brews companies here done it. 
All right, that's enough about graphics. That's about enough design. This is about being Crow Magnon. I don't know if this will shape shift me into some uh, more primeval human being, but let's give it a shot. Oh, this temperature is just fine, not too warm, not too cold. And the reason why I don't want to have these kind of beers with a lot of hoppiness too cold is that the kind of a taste dies. I mean, it just kind of fades away. But when you have more temperature, the hoppiness will, you know, bring, it will be brought up more. It's like this, if you eat cold pizza versus warm pizza, you know what the difference is. This is all about physics. I'm not going to go into details. Physics and chemistry, basically, because the temperature, obviously, uh, affects how our how the uh, molecules move and as such affect how we taste things. Well, lager beers are usually rather nice to be kind of a fridge cold because they don't have lots of taste. And when they kind of reach the room temperature, they start to taste like shit, which tells a lot about this nature of lager beer. Easy drink when they're cold, but then again, so is vodka. But if you want to go with beers with actual taste and hoppiness and bitterness, you want to have a little bit warmth. I wouldn't actually mind if this was a little bit warmer because now I'm getting the hoppiness and the bitterness and they are kind of like embracing my tongue, especially the tip of the tongue. And I, I, I can just stop having for more. It's I'm like yearning for this. And I gotta say, this one is a really, really nice tasting. I'm no beer specialist. I don't know the proper way to... Uh, enjoy this but i do know how to enjoy it myself so i let them kind of roll around my tongue uh, and you know as such it starts to seep kind of into my my mouth maybe there is some special parts i need to know i don't and that's kind of when the taste starts to form and um give this bittery feeling and now i can i totally understand why lager drinking people might be going like oh horrible whereas i'm like yay it's much like lo-fi or necro sounding stuff now at this moment i doubt many black metal people will actually be watching this but it's worth mentioning this could be also a death metal uh, metaphor because some people might be like i can't stand that cruel vocal stuff i can't stand that screamy vocal stuff i can't stand it go necro sound it's so horrible and me i'm like hey man that's what it is if you go way too posh and polished and clean and nice and all that stuff you're losing the nuances you're losing the whole point and the point is for beer in my opinion not to get you drunk i mean it's a nice side effect every now and then but the point is to taste good it's much like sex it's just not physics it's not like in and out and get the hell out of here it's more about enjoyment and for me with beers taste is that enjoyment the after product might be that i get drunk i may pass out i may end up puking my guts out and have hung over next day but what i actually like to do with drinking beer or more like sipping tasting beer is that i want to taste the goodness it can be really bitter. I mean, I love IPAs and APAs. And uh, the more bittery and more hoppiness it usually is, the more it appeals to me, because it's like the necrosound stuff here. And uh, this one definitely has more hoppiness than usual APAs, which I've enjoyed. Because usually it's more the IPA stuff, which is more hoppy, and APA is more like a compromise between your more, not maybe necessarily lame, but a basic beer. But this one has the hoppiness, which just like starts to sting. Like I stab my uh, tip of the tongue with their small knives and blades. Really nice tasting. Now, this is something I could go back buying from the local grocery store. Because in Finland, where it actually recaps, or recaps, just caps, I guess, is it 5.5? If you go beyond that, you have to go the dedicated alcohol store, Alco, in Finland. But with 5.5 stuff, you can actually buy this with your groceries, your food stuff. And as such, it would be nice to just pick up a couple of these for, I don't know, for sauna party or maybe going to the park. And because it's nice graphic design, I mean, we all know that album covers, beer can looks, they don't really matter that much when you are about to enjoy the contents. 
but it definitely affects how uh, how we behave when we're tasting something new and this appeals to me i like how it, it it's totally uh, you know linked to this album and it also fits the taste very well because this is no some kind of a pussy ass thing this is about real taste some balls and as such i think it's way too heavy to handle like the last track here in this album says bigger louder harder this is the kind of a uh, thing that's happening with this glass so salute to this beer and if i had to pick winner could it be like winner between a beer and an album well this beer wins this time so go taste it give us toner kings a listen and figure out if they're your cup of tea at least this beer is right up in my alley like the saying goes cheers have a good one bye bye